In my previous video, I discussed how Condorcet voting methods are considered superior to the alternative vote method, and that Condorcet methods are generally considered to be the best overall of the single winner ranked ballot methods. And remember, a ranked ballot method is one where voters rank the candidates 1, 2, 3, etc., with one as their favourite. A Condorcet winner is a candidate that is preferred by a majority of voters to each other candidate. In a head-to-head -head against any other candidate, the Condorcet winner would win a majority of the votes. And the Condorcet method is one that always elects the Condorcet winner where one exists. On the face of it, this seems like a logical thing to want a voting system to do. But as I mentioned in my last video, there isn't always a Condorcet winner. You can have an election where candidate A is preferred by a majority to candidate B, B preferred to C, but then C preferred to A. And there are many different Condorcet methods which resolve this in different ways, some of which are quite complex. The Condorcet method with the most support is probably the Schulze method, named after its inventor, Marcus Schulze. It's quite a complex system, and I don't think I'd be able to adequately explain it in this video. But it's got its own Wikipedia article if you want to have a look at that. I'll put all links that come up on the screen in the video description to give you something to click on. But anyway, the most basic Condorcet three-way tie is as follows. One voter ranks candidate A top, followed by candidate B, then candidate C. One voter ranks candidate B top, followed by candidate C, then candidate A. And one voter ranks candidate C top, followed by candidate A, then candidate B. In this case, candidate A beats B by two votes to one, B beats C by two votes to one, and C beats A by two votes to one. These three ballots form an exact three-way tie, so you might think that you should be able to treat them as a single unit and remove several of these units from a Condorcet election without it affecting the result. But you'd be wrong. Take a look at the following election with nine voters and three candidates. Three voters rank candidate A top, followed by B, then C. Two voters rank candidate B top, followed by C, and then A. Two voters rank candidate C top, followed by A, and then B. And two voters rank candidate B top, followed by A, and then C. With these ballots, candidate A is the Condorcet winner. A beats B by five votes to four, and also beats C by five votes to four when they are compared head to head. Now we can remove six ballots, or two units, that form an exact Condorcet tie, as follows. And now, as it's quite easy to see, candidate B is the Condorcet winner, beating A by two votes to one, and C by three votes to zero. So the winner has changed from A to B, even though the removed ballots seem as though they should cancel out. This doesn't necessarily disqualify Condorcet methods, but it's certainly something to think about. The winner changes from A to B under alternative vote as well. Condorcet methods, like alternative vote, also have the problem of what is called favourite betrayal. This means that it makes sense for a voter to sometimes not rank their favourite candidate top if they want to get the best result for themselves. Take a look at the following example with nine voters and three candidates. Two voters rank candidate A top followed by B then C. Three voters rank candidate B top, followed by C, and then A. And four voters rank candidate C top, followed by A, and then B. If we have a look at the head-to-head, -head, we can see that A beats B by six votes to three, B beats C by five votes to four, and C beats A by seven votes to two. There is no Condorcet winner in this case. But candidate B has the largest margin of victory in their win against A, and the smallest loss in their defeat against B, and so would be elected under virtually any Condorcet method, and indeed probably under any ranked ballot method that anyone would take seriously. With only two voters, the candidate A supporters would have a hard time getting their favourite to win this election, but they could instead betray their favourite and put their second favourite, candidate B, top. This would give us the following ballots. Candidate B now beats both A and C by five votes to four to become the Condorcet winner, 
meaning that it would be in the interests of the A supporters to betray their favourite in such a scenario. Of course, in the original election scenario, which is now back on screen, there was no Condorcet winner, so you might think that a Condorcet method could elect A or B and maybe avoid this favourite betrayal scenario. But if A was somehow elected in the original election, then the three BCA voters could betray their favourite candidate B and put C top. C would now win the election as the Condorcet winner, which is better for the BCA voters than candidate A winning. Similarly, if candidate B is elected in the original election, then the four CAB voters could put A top, securing victory for candidate A over candidate B. So whichever candidate wins in the original scenario, some of the voters can get a better result by betraying their favourite. But there is a caveat to this. Some Condorcet elections allow voters to rank candidates equally. So, for example, the two ABC voters could instead rank A and B equally top rather than putting B ahead of A, which wouldn't be a full favourite betrayal. And under some Condorcet methods, this would be enough for candidate B to overturn candidate C's victory. However, while a little more complicated, it can be shown that all Condorcet methods still fail favourite betrayal, even with equal ranks permitted. But instead of going through it here, I'll provide you with a link on the screen. Also, allowing equal ranks does add a degree of complexity to the voting system. And while it may mitigate against favourite betrayal to some extent, the extra complexity makes adoption in elections less likely. Generally speaking, in close elections, voters could be rewarded by artificially ranking their favourite of the two frontrunners top and their least favourite of these two bottom. This sort of exaggeration, which can also happen under alternative vote, could mean that two-party domination remains entrenched if either of these systems were adopted for general elections. And it does appear that in Australia, where they use alternative vote for their House of Representatives, voters tend to exaggerate in this manner. No country uses the Condorcet method for general elections, so we're lacking data on that. Also, the more complex the voting system is, the more likely it is that at least some voters will not know how votes are counted, and Condorcet methods are necessarily fairly complex. Having to rank candidates is consistent with many different counting methods, with none of them the single intuitively obvious choice, so an ignorant voter would not know from the ballot design how an election is likely to work. Because of this, ranked ballot methods in general are likely to suffer from voters adopting this exaggeration strategy, even in cases where it might not be beneficial to do so. All Condorcet methods, along with alternative vote, also fail the participation criterion. This means that you can sometimes get a better result through not voting at all than by casting an honest ballot. For example, candidate A might win the election if you don't vote. But if you do vote, you might submit a ballot with candidate A, who won anyway, ranked ahead of candidate B, who you like less. But with this ballot added, candidate B could end up winning the election. Scenarios like this can happen under all Condorcet methods. I won't show you the proof here, but you can find a proof by going to the page on the screen. One final problem of Condorcet methods is publication of results. For all its faults, in a first-past-the-post election, you can just publish the number of votes for each candidate, or the percentages, or both, and it will be quite clear who won and by how much. In a Condorcet election, you would need to publish the head-to-heads between the individual candidates, which would be a lot more to digest. And if there isn't a Condorcet winner, and the election has to be resolved in some other way, it would be even more complicated to explain why the winning candidate won. It would be incredibly far removed from a simple list of votes. In contrast to the complexity of Condorcet methods, we have the simplicity of graded systems such as score voting and approval voting. In score voting, each voter gives the candidate scores out of, say, 10, and quite simply the candidate with the highest total score wins. Approval voting is even simpler, on a par with first past the post. Each voter simply votes for, or approves, as many or as few candidates as they like, and the candidate with the most votes wins. This is actually just a basic form of score voting, but with scores out of 1. These systems avoid the problems of Condorcet methods that I have described in this video, and I will discuss them in more detail in a later video. Of course, score voting and approval voting are not perfect themselves, and have other problems of their own that I will discuss.
But one final word on Condorcet methods. While I have highlighted their flaws in this video, they are probably the best ranked ballot methods in most situations, and they do have their uses. Popular Condorcet methods include the Schultzer method, which I've already mentioned, and ranked pairs. But when it comes to electing, for example, members of parliament, I think their complexity, along with the other problems, would be a step too far. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, you can subscribe to my channel. Even better, you can buy my book, Stuff and Consciousness, Connecting Matter and Mind, by me, Toby Pereira. It's all about how your seemingly non-physical thoughts and feelings can come from your physical brain. It's available in paperback and also on Kindle. Links are available in the video description below, or you can visit my website at www.tobyperera.co.uk. Thank you.